Hey, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Grace. I'm doing the astrology for the week and we're going to do a tarot card pull for the collective. Um, if there's something in the title that brought you here, perhaps there's a message for you. So thank you so much for being here. Um, if you like what I do, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That helps me out a lot um, and lets other people know that there's stuff here for them as well. So this week I'm talking about June 19th through the 25th. I'm recording on the 19th. Happy Juneteenth to everybody out there. Wow. Uh, this year I'm noticing how culturally, I'm in the Midwest, culturally we're, I, I'm experiencing how the spirit of Juneteenth is extending into um, not just today, but the whole weekend and also further into the month of June, um, especially in Chicago. I think it's really great to see that happening. Um, we just experienced the new moon in Gemini. Um, new moons are great for setting intentions. And this one specifically sort of feels like, um, I don't know, not like all over the place. But if you feel that you have not had a specific intention um, to work with, it could be because Gemini is the energy and the spirit of... Um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, kind of like, you know, the duality of um, many things being true potentially at the same time. Um, Gemini is also the sign of communication, you know, rules the third house of communication. And so there might be just a lot of ideas on the board and it's not our job to choose maybe one specific thing to work with this new moon, uh, but rather to try and see the possibilities. So there's that. At the same time, Saturn went retrograde this weekend as well. I missed that last week to mention that, but it did. Um, I believe it's retrograding in the sign of Pisces. 12th house. Do I need to confirm that? Yeah. Okay, so Saturn moved into Pisces March 7th. It's a slow-moving planet, so it's still in there. Uh, but if you can recall... I wrote sense of justice and willingness, imagination, creativity. So yeah, Saturn rules the 10th house of ambition. This is our time. It rules the aspect of time, karma, lessons. Um, it's why so many people experience challenges during their Saturn return, which is when Saturn returns to the same point in the sky approximately 29 to 30 years um, after they were born. And in the sign of Pisces, I feel that we are going to be learning a lot of lessons or experiencing restructuring around our imagination or what our imagination um, leaves us to believe. How, how have we been exhibiting or playing into our own self-limiting beliefs? There's also a karmic energy, right? So things may come up. For you to deal with. Pisces is very deep. Pisces is the subconscious. So we may experience things that are showing up for us from, from the deeper parts of ourselves. And that's going to be basically for the rest of the summer um, and into the fall till November-ish. Um, but back to more current timelines of this week. Uh, we are entering cancer season. On the summer solstice this Wednesday, um, there there's a few aspects with Chiron. If you remember, Chiron is the wounded healer. It's warrior energy. It's this idea of like what you've healed for yourself. You can help others achieve as well. And so this week, what's showing up is the energy of knowing what that is. Have you been able to identify that what that is for yourself? Uh, hint, it's in your birth chart too. Where is your Chiron? In what sign? In what house? That'll point you to kind of that direction. But what we're looking for is an alignment of values according to um, what that position might be and how it manifests for you in your life. The birth chart is, is more of a um, guideline. We don't have to um, 
be exactly using that as our instructions for life, but more like guideposts, if you will. So Chiron is being illuminated. Um, it's in an aspect with Mars in a trine, which is harmonious. And Mars is like the energy of going after something, how you show up, taking action. And so this reads as willpower, right? Our willingness to see our vulnerability to, and to use that as a strength our willingness to go there. And cancer supports this, it being cancer season, uh, rules the fourth house of our home, and that space inside of us that is home, that we protect deeply, right? Also, cancer rules the card in the tarot, the moon, which is about the subconscious as well. So even though we're in a new moon cycle and we're approaching the first quarter moon, which is all about gaining momentum and making plans and taking action. We are, I think, emotionally in a state of this like full moon uh, subconscious emergence um, energy. And so, yeah, Mars trying Chiron, I wrote, does, this, you know, willpower, does this sound familiar? Because to me, it reminds me of the chariot, which is our card of the year. This is the card of personal evolution, of revolution, of graduating to the next level. This is about understanding challenges as facilitators for growth, finding relief from past constraints. Are we cautiously optimistic? I think that's a good place to be. Um, some of us may be learning to tame the dragon, as it were. But more so, this is a time to find ways to be more sure of yourself. How are you coming home to yourself? This is our theme for the month of June. If you recall a few videos back, we talked a lot about that. How are you coming back home to yourself? How are you trusting yourself more? And that can look many different ways for different people. Um, and I do want to just um, point out something that leaks into next week, um, but in general could show up at any time. There is possibly some confusion showing up. So if you are unclear, I feel that that's possible that there may be other things going on or distractions. I definitely see this in the astrology as, where, as well. I wonder if this is again, one of those ways that Saturn is showing up to test us um, to see how well we can adjust our, our you know, decision-making skills or our, the way that we think about things or process things, how well we are going to be able to adapt during this retrograde period. Um, but, but other than that, Saturn is in a sextile with Jupiter. This is very harmonious. Um, this is also Taurus and Pisces playing with each other because Jupiter is in Taurus, if you recall. And so to me, this feels very like 3D versus 5D. Taurus rules everything that is material. It's the second house of wealth, uh, materials, values, in that sense. You know, like even our, not just our um, intangible values, but, or sorry, not just our tangible values, but our intangible values. Um, beauty and love as well. Um, I've, I read online somewhere, actually this was on social media, but I love this and I wish I could attribute this, but I, I can't remember right now. If you want to see change, you change what you love because we serve what we love. If you're serving something that isn't serving you anymore, it's about in, introspecting why do we love those things? Why do, we why do we even love the things that harm us? Because serving those things is evidence that we love them. Um, so that's interesting. That's something I'm going to write down and, and journal on. I invite you if you want to do the same. And so, yeah, there are these challenges that will show up, and they're meant to facilitate growth. It's okay to be cautiously optimistic. We have Taurus and Pisces sort of working um, together to show us those things. How is the subconscious affecting what shows up in real life? And in some ways, the, the values of what Taurus is, 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 is offering here shows up in the 12th house Pisces. 
right, in our subconscious, in the ways that we invisibly self-sabotage or, or lead ourselves down a path that is not serving. So there's healing going on in these dimensions, right? Second 12th house. This can feel like confusion. I think that that's supportive of that. So be aware. Be aware of psychic vampires. Don't rely on impulsivity at this time. There could be a lot of fantasies going around. Under try to understand and feel into yourself so that you know when you're thinking your own thoughts. Are you feeling your own feelings? Are you being true to your purpose and mission, to your values, and are you behaving in, in that lane? Um, this is also, I got this from online, but accidents can be prone to happen. I think that's why there's this, ur this urge to not act impulsively. Um, it could be easy to harm oneself or another through impulsivity. Express your creative outlet, socially, sexually, etc. The first quarter is happening in Libra because, uh, well, not because, just it is. <laughs> first quarter is in Libra. And Libra is the, um, the rules of seventh health of partnerships. So in this first quarter, as we're gaining momentum, we may be, you know, we may find security in that there's other people who feel similar to, similarly to us, who can offer us more of that kind of validation, that mirror. Seventh house is the house of partnerships. It's like go together. And I think this is where we can be cautiously optimistic of, you know, making sure that we're in alignment with our true values and it's okay f to align with, with those who feel similarly, but just understanding that uh, if you're on your healing journey, this is a personal affair and to not take on the burdens and expectations of others on your path. And that's, that's the last thing I want to say because that confusion is showing up on the first quarter Libra. And if we're meant to take on allies, I think this shadow period uh, before... The shadow period of the Venus retrograde, which is happening in Leo next month for the rest of the summer, it sort of is, for me, pointing towards that. Um, this energy of like really vet the people, the energies that are showing up at this time. Okay. Let's do a tarot reading for anybody who's watching. Okay, we have Nine of Pentacles, Six of Cups, The Sun, Page of Pentacles, Four of Swords. Mm. That was for me. Oh, there's the moon. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh boy, we have the moon in reverse, the five of pentacles, the devil, and the two of swords. Um, the only way through is through. <laughs> Hold on, what is that? How does that go? The only way to the other side is to go through it. You got to go through it. Um, it's showing here there's no good option. Definitely there's confusion, but... But I also see that there will be clarity. There will be clarity. It's just like very foggy right now. The devil represents the things that bind us. What are we tied to? This could be, you know, our vices. Definitely. Um, it manifests as, you know, mental health. Um, yeah, king of swords in reverse. We're not in tune with our voice here. I'm going to start laying these out because I don't want to, I don't want this to be forever taking. Uh, if you want a full reading from me, you can message me on my website at theintuitivelens.com. I have a contact form. Um, I do donation-based readings. All right, let's keep going. Three more, please.
Thank you so much. What is it? All right, so we have the Ace of Wands, the Six of Wands, Two of Cups in Reverse, Three of Pentacles, Ace of Cups in Reverse, Eight of Wands, Four of Swords in Reverse, the Sun in Reverse, and the King Queen of Swords. We have the King over here, the Queen on this side. Uh, that's Air Energy. So that's kind of pointing to the upcoming first quarter moon uh, next week, especially since that's sort of where the reading is ending. Um, let's see here. I see two times a cups card in reverse. It's the ace and the two. So we are at the beginning of a new journey when it comes to love and self-love. Um, the, 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 the message that I'm getting from this reading right now is sort of like, don't be like everybody else. Uh, do your own thing. Um, if you feel, if you're feeling creative, like in a creative rut, I don't think that's, that's true for everybody, but maybe for some of you, there may be some folks who feel creatively burnt out or that simply it's been, it may be, it may have been a difficult journey to receive the kind of attention or affection, we'll say, among peers, among your peers. This is showing up as um, somebody not showing up fully for you or somebody not understanding how to, um, like, s people don't know how to read your mind. I'll say that. You have this um, idea you have an idea or something that you're passionate about and you're willing to move forward towards that end, but it's like the other, whatever other energy is showing up here uh, wants to be there, but you're kind of seeing it as like they're not there. That's what I'm picking up. And this is where this confusion, I think, may be coming from. You may decide that, they're, that you're not... Um, how to say, I see the impulsivity in the eight of, in the eight of wands. There's that. Um, I also see burnout. There's something about trying and, and feeling tired as a result. And with the ace of cups in the middle here, I'll say that the biggest takeaway here is to fill your own cup. Do not behave in, do not behave in the constraints or expectations of others at this time. This is more of a time to seek out your own counsel, uh, spend time in meditation, spend time trying to understand what's going on in your mind so that you can show up fully and show up um, clearly. Um, the sun is in reverse. Do something that makes you happy. Do something that feels fulfilling and work on F turning this four of swords back upright this is the card of burnout if you go too fast something will fizzle out quickly and then you'll be sad <laughs> you know uh, the sun in reverse um so definitely take your time right the, there there was like a passionate beginning to something um it feels, two, two of cups in reverse. There's a, this is a mirroring card. There is an angel there, so there is protection in this, you know, collaboration, if you will. This is a situation that makes you feel successful. It makes you feel worthy. But it's, and this is maybe just for some of you, but like it, it kind of feels false in that the ace of cups shows up in the reverse. This is not something that is actually filling your cup. It's actually draining your cup because it's taking a lot of energy from you too quickly. It's not sustainable. That's where we lead to burnout. And so the Queen of Swords, the message of the Queen of Swords, she's the survivor of the tarot and she 
is sort of like an expert boundary setter. She knows how to protect her energy because she's been through it, she's seen it. And the medicine of the Queen of Swords is that um, as the Divine Feminine and of the sword element, we are equally compassionate as we are logical. We're balancing and harmonizing the head and the heart with the Queen of Swords. And I think this is the best advice for this week um, as we move towards the first quarter moon in Libra. There'll be more on that next week. So I hope you tune in and come check it out. I want to thank you again so much for being here, for watching these videos. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the uh, comment section below. And don't forget, there is a recommended listening, as always, with each week's video. Thanks so much, y'all, and I'll see you later.